Filipino broom maker Gloria Hernandez longs for chicken and milkfish, big milkfish. She can only afford small ones now, and they don't add up to a decent meal. She eats rice with coffee twice a day so she doesn't feel hungry. Fried eggs and bread, those are the foods Nigerian clergyman Famiya Wakon Moses used to eat all the time and misses the most. They're not on the verge of starvation as so many millions are, but they're suffering from what's called food insecurity in moderate to severe degrees, unable to afford a balanced and nutritious diet because of income loss and rising prices. That's an increase of 320 million people in one year. Lockdowns and travel restrictions have eliminated jobs and affected livelihoods, and prices of food in some places have skyrocketed due to shortages and production delays. Families are resorting to cheaper or less healthy foods, or simply eating less. Women bear the brunt of this crisis, says Earthrin Cousin, former executive director of the World Food Program and founder and CEO of Food Systems for the Future, a global nonprofit that helps fight malnutrition in low-income communities. It's the mother who opens the cupboard and it's empty, she. Your child is looking at you saying, I'm hungry. What's for dinner? Food insecurity says you can't answer that question for your child. Who are these newcomers to food insecurity? Here are profiles from around the world. We asked our interviewees about the jobs they've lost, the family members they are trying to feed, and the favorite foods that are now out of reach. Winron Camelia Araujo Barreto, 50, sees someone begging in the street, she tries to give what she can, even though she can barely make ends meet as a house cleaner. Maybe I don't give them money but I buy them a little bit of bread, a nice cream for a child. I give them a positive gesture so they can go on, so they can fight, and that strengthens me a lot, she says. It's been a tough year for Barreto. Many of her cleaning jobs have dried up because of the economic stresses of the pandemic. Her one-time clients are often out of work and now clean for themselves, she says. She considered selling bags of candy and fruit to cars stopped at traffic lights, but without health insurance, she doesn't want to risk a COVID-19 infection. This wasn't the life she planned when she left Venezuela. Barreto came to Ecuador in 2019 to escape her homeland's dire economic situation. She says in Venezuela, she had no money to eat, take the bus or give medicine. 